Hello everybody. Um, batteries, specifically 18650 batteries, which are these type of batteries. They're lithium ion usually. I'm sure they, I've actually only, I've only seen them come in lithium ion for, format. I'm sure there's other chemistries, like a metal hydride and <coughs> whatever. But me personally, I've only ever seen them in um, lithium ion. They are called 18650 because they are 18 millimeters wide. 65 millimeters long uh, and they're very popular in um, a lot of rechargeable consumer devices such as particularly um, power banks for phones and you'd also find them a lot in uh, like Bluetooth speakers and they're actually used in laptop batteries you know the big chunky battery you see in your laptop is if you open it up you'll probably find a load of these taped together <coughs> in a uh, probably in series to sort of boost the voltage up um, so although you probably never you You've probably never seen them and probably think they just look like a slightly larger AA battery. They are very common. And um, they're not cheap because they're lithium ion. Um, uh, this is a Samsung model. It's 2400 milliamp hours. It's quite old. It's on, it's, I think it's about six or seven years old now. It's been recharged and decharged a lot. Uh, but I got this in um, <coughs> uh, was it Radio Spares RS, Radionics. And it was 12 euros, so no, a lot, cheap, a lot more expensive than nickel metal hydride AA batteries. But anyway, so if you hit the eBay or one of the sort of standard Far Eastern trading sites, Alibaba or um, Deal Extreme, you'll find loads of sellers selling um, 18650 batteries and making, well, frankly extravagant claims. Uh, these are a brand called Ultrafire, which you will see a lot on eBay and AliExpress. Uh, I'm going to take a couple of them out. Um, oh, by the way, this device here is actually a power bank. Um, it was, um, I bought it empty. So you can buy these empty on eBay and put your own batteries in them. And I think it was, it was quite cheap, it was only like uh, six or seven dollars. And it works, does the job, and it has two outputs USB 1, USB 2. It also has a, a variable voltage output. So you can choose um, by pressing the button on the front between a 12 and 5 volts, also 5, 5 and a half, 6, 9 and 12 and you can actually output using a barrel connector as well. Only disadvantage to it is recharging it, you have to use their lead. So there's a USB, you plug a, one end of a lead into a USB plug but the other end has a barrel connector here so uh, that's the only thing. You can't just use a standard micro USB to charge this up but that's not a big deal. So anyway, the batteries, they, they claim to be 5000 milliamp hours. Now I bought six of these for eight dollars for this thing here, and of course I knew can't really believe everything you read online. Um, so yeah, and they they're not like in theory this power bank here has thirty thousand milliamp hours, which looking at the maths, very rough back of the envelope mathematics, my phone takes about uh, forty five hundred milliamp hours to charge up. So. Uh, and I've tested that using the USB meter, and my battery, the battery on my phone's uh, 2,800 milliamp hours. So there's always a loss in charging. So like I say, um, I wouldn't say double, but I'd say about an extra third of power is required to charge a, ba a phone battery. So it, with that in mind, and also, well, you also have to take into account there is a loss with power banks as, as the power is ramped up. But 30,000 milliamp hours, even allowing, say, for 20% loss, which would mean... Um, You'd be taken down to uh, 24,000 milliamp hours. Um, that should, in theory, be enough to charge up my phone at least two or three times before this thing expires. Well, I struggle to charge it up once. And that's like, uh, I think the best I've ever managed to get out of it is to charge my phone from about 60% up to uh, 100%, which is okay, but like, yeah, this isn't for, no, these batteries are way, 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 way below stated capacity. So how do you test it? Well. There's a rather nice line of chargers called the Opus chargers, and again, you'll find them on eBay, but you'll also find them in reputable dealers. And it's basically a battery charger for these types of unusual lithium-ion batteries. Uh, and it'll charge, it'll test, it'll do other sorts of things. So it's, there's a quick test, not the quick test, it looks at the internal resistance. What I'm going to do is just put these batteries in and start the quick test, because it's set up using the mode button. And let's see what it comes back with for each of these. Should take about 10 seconds. Um, okay, oh, 
actually that's not bad. It's 255, 236, 234, 265. Um, so the internal resistance is not bad actually. Now, <coughs> pardon me, <coughs> hay fever. The general rule is anything below 500 is good for high drain applications. So that would be, that's actually quite good for stuff like this because the drain on this is quite fast. Anything above 500 would be um, not good for high drain applications and that would be stuff like um, Bluetooth speakers because they don't they don't suck power out they're very fast they're designed to you know, prolong the battery life or um, LED light arrays or stuff like that no, anyway so these are actually pretty decent in terms of internal resistance and current drain so what I need to do now is test them for the actual capacity now that will take a while so what I'm going to do is I have to take the batteries out to change the mode and I'll switch to oh come on what are you doing? I'm going to reset it. Switching it on and off again. And when it starts, charge, discharge, discharge, refresh, test. Quick test. There we go. So it's charge, test. So I'll put the batteries in. And that'll trigger. The test now it's that it's giving me um <clears> hmm <throat> five hundred milliamps. That's quite low, if that's what is true. Please allow me to refer to the manual. Ah, right, okay. It's now draining that many milliamps out of the battery. So, I now have to put put the pause on the video and come back in a few hours when this is done. So, uh, I'll see you in a few hours. And the results are in. And you may also notice that the sound quality is somewhat improved. Um, turns out the last time I didn't put a memory card in my sound recorder and I didn't realise, so there you go. But anyway, uh, the Opus charger has done its stuff and it uh, fully charged up the batteries and then fully discharged them and it was able to tell me just what is the capacity of these batteries. And as you can see, there is one that's 574 milliamp hours, one is 601 milliamp hours, 617 milliamp hours and 625 milliamp hours. <clears throat> Which is considerably less, oh, I'm jumping out me there, than the 5,000 milliamp hours that is stated on the side of these batteries. Um, I knew what I was buying when I bought them. I didn't actually think for a minute that I was buying really, no, real 5,000 milliamp hour batteries. And I know that because if I go to my local specialist electrical retailer, which is RS, or even if you go and do a search online to the likes of uh, Moiser or Farnell or any proper specialist battery retailer, you won't actually find any 5,000 milliamp hour bat uh, 18650 batteries. In fact, the, the largest I've found was 3,600 milliamp hours, and that battery alone was 26 euros. So that a single battery. So to get uh, six 5,000 milliamp hour batteries for nine dollars was not very likely. That being said, I was kind of expecting to get batteries that might have been, oh, 1,500 milliamp hours, which would be uh, sort of like a half to two thirds of what is average for reputable brand batteries. But yeah, but to get as low as this is pretty bad. Like I think these are five, they are 500 milliamp hour batteries. And whenever they were doing the labels, they just said, sod it, we'll just put 5,000 on and be done with. Uh, they could argue that's plausible deniability. It was a typing error or something like that there. But, um, come on, camera focus. There we go. So, um, yes, disappointed. Well, actually, not really disappointed. I knew exactly what I was getting. But that would explain why my uh, power bank only struggles to give my phone a single charge. Because, whereas I thought, you know, the labels would imply that there was 30,000 milliamp hours in that. In reality, there's about 3,000 milliamp hours. 
uh, and my phone takes four and a half thousand milliamp hours to charge up from the mains but again there's loss there's always a loss as you drain power from one of these power banks and there's always a loss as the power goes into the phone so yeah giving my phone about 40 or 50 percent of a charge of its battery that seems about reasonable for these so there you go um the ultra fire if you see this brand name be be very wary you're not getting anywhere near what you think you're getting um they're cheap they're nasty they're crap and if you want if you're working on little projects where you don't really care about how no you just want some batteries for mucking around with fine but if you're actually going to build something useful something you actually want to do something useful and productive with don't waste your money on them honestly they're crap cheerio